All right, Larry Kruger here from the Pig and a Pickle Crew Show. Uh, a little 49er video on a Tuesday. And of course, Pig and a Pickle, the title sponsor of the Krug Show. Check them out. They're in Emeryville. They're in Corte Madera. They're open seven days a week in Emeryville and Corte Madera from 11 a.m. till 8 p.m. Go say hi to Damon. Go say hi to Mary. Get some brisket. Get some brisket chili. Tell them the Krug sent you. I love Pig and a Pickle. And this video is brought to you by, by Mancini Sleep World. They're a proud sponsor of the Krug Show. Mancini's offers... 120 night guarantee with a range of brands and price points with Mancini's. You get free next day delivery. We are loving our Mancini's bed. Click the link below or go to sleepworld.com and find a bed that works for you. Whether you shop online or visiting in store, all you got to do is use that code KRUG10, K-R-U-E-G-10, and you'll get 10% off. Again, that's K-R-U-E-G-10. 10 to get 10% off in store or online at sleepworld.com. And thanks to Mancini's for being a proud sponsor of the Krug Show. All right. Um, I think we've gotten to that point in Brock Purdy's career where enough of the fence straddling. <clears throat> you're either with this guy or you're not. You're either a believer or you're not. He's This, is, this guy is now in his third season as the starter. He's played in the playoffs. He's played teams multiple times. He's played in the Super Bowl. Uh, he's come back from injury. And then last week... He did it without his weapons. And when I say he did it, he completed 22 of 30 on the Rams for 288 yards. That's 73%. Three touchdowns. He takes care of the football. There was no interceptions. He had a 137.1 quarterback rating. Um, he ran when he needed to run, and he ran effectively. So much so that he had to have an MRI on his back, and his status for this week is still TB to be determined. But pro football focus, a lot of people thought there were six drops originally credited to Purdy's receivers. PFF now says there were four. Okay, so if we take those four drops and make them completions, he completed 87% of his passes. 87%. This is a guy who completed 90% last year against Arizona. I think it was 95. 87%. No Debo, no Kittle. No CMC, no Ayuk. And when you say, well, Ayuk played, Ayuk stinks. He played, but he stinks. No Kittle, no Debo, no CMC. And this version of Ayuk, you have a beat-up version of Trent Williams, a horrendous special teams, a defense that doesn't do anything well, and people are still taking shots at Brock Purdy. It's like, dude, if you're taking shots at Brock Purdy, you don't know shit. That's it. Official. If you're ripping Brock Purdy, you shouldn't be critiquing football. You really shouldn't. And if you notice the people that are critiquing Brock Purdy are people that have no credentials. And the people that have all the credentials say nothing about Brock Purdy. All right, let's, let's, let's hear from some people with credentials. Okay? You've heard from me. You know, I told you guys when this guy was a rookie that he was a baller. I went on 95-7 the game and told Shasky and Bonte in his rookie year. I'm like, hey, dude, Brock Purdy ain't just nothing. He's something. And they're like, ah, yeah, yeah, Krug, you maniac, this and that. You love these practice squad, blah, blah, blah. Who's laughing now, right? Who's laughing now? So I was right on this guy way, way back. Now, I wasn't right on draft day. I didn't like the move on draft day. But by now, I've told this story 20 times. A buddy of mine sent me film and said, hey, study this kid. Take a real deeper look. I think you're wrong. And I did do that deep, deep dive, and I was wrong. And I basically came out in May and said, hey, this guy looks like something. But in June, I'm like, he really looks like something. And by training camp, I'm like, dude, this guy's the guy. We had Niner beat writers who were convinced they were going to cut him for Nate fucking Sudfeld. Nate Sudfeld. All right. That was years ago. Now we've all learned our lesson. Brock Purdy's played great football. He's been, to, he's went to the NFC Championship game. Then he went to the Super Bowl. Played well in the Super Bowl. Now, he, now here he is uh, without his weapons and he's playing great ball. He had the best stats of any quarterback in football last week. The best stats of any quarterback in football. But it's all still Brock's not this and Brock's not that. And oh, my God. And, you know, they're loading the box, not because the Niners are slow as molasses 
at wide receiver. No, that can't be why. They're, they're loading the box because Brock can't do it. Brock is the fault. It Brock's their weakness. That is a load of shit. And if you'd want to believe me, you can believe me. But don't take it from me. Let's hear from Richard Sherman. Here's Richard Sherman on Brock Purdy. I thought this was a statement game for Brock Purdy because they say he can't do it without his weapons. He can't. What, what is he going to do when Kittle's out? What is he going to do when, when, when Debo's out? What is he going to do with Christian McCaffrey? Well, all three of them were out. He threw for almost 300, three touchdowns and no interceptions. He ran the ball 41 yards. He, that, that's, he's a good quarterback. He's an elite quarterback. I, I'd say he's one of the top five quarterbacks in the National Football League. And if, and if you give him the same criticism, then please give it to Joe Burrow. Please, please give it to every quarterback that you think is elite that has not played that way because he's playing that way and you don't want to give him credit. Don't tell me T. Higgins is hurt and that's why Joe Burrow is playing the way he did because that's, that's asinine. That's, that's hypocritical because you're saying, so now he needs T. Higgins to be able to reach his potential. So he's not alone special. He's only special if he has T. Higgins and Jamar Chase and all these weapons and Joe Mixon, or is he special in his own right? He's a heck of a quarterback, but he does need help. And I'm trying to get people to understand, you got guys playing some really good football right now that will never get credit because of where, what you think of them or what the past. Geno Smith played a really good game has played, you know, with the two interceptions, that'll take away from his performance. But Sam Darnold was was forgotten about, left for dead, not relevant, and playing elite football. So if you talked about the top quarterbacks in the National Football League right now, it's not necessarily the highest paid guys. It's not. And 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 if you say you talk about this list and you don't mention Brock Purdy, then you're a hater. Then you're just a hater. You're just a guy who doesn't like low round picks, um, overachieving and playing above what you expect them to do, and you want to continue to go with things that are the way they're projected. Hey, this guy was a first-round pick. This guy, I think, should be good, so I'm going to say he's good, and I'm not expecting this guy to be good, so even if he's playing good, I'm not going to give him that kind of credit. All right, there's a little bit of Richard Sherman right there. Um, so don't listen to me. Richard Sherman says Brock Purdy's an elite quarterback. Richard Sherman says Brock Purdy's a top-five quarterback in the NFL. Richard Sherman saying, hey, you know what? You took away Kittle. You took away Debo. You took away CMC. Trent went down. Ayuk's a shadow of what he used to be. He's got hardly anything out there. 300 yards, three touchdowns, no picks, 41 yards rushing, uh, incredible stats. And as, as uh, Richard Sherman said, you know what? At this point, you're just, you're just a hater. You're just a hater because you're not ripping Joe Burrow. You're not ripping Joe Burrow. You're not ripping Justin Herbert. Nobody's ripping those guys. Uh, you're giving those guys passes. Uh, it wasn't this. It wasn't that. It wasn't this. It wasn't that. But Brock Purdy, he's got to be perfect, absolutely perfect every single week without, without you know, three of his premier weapons. He will see what he does without his weapons. The Niners lost. They lost because their defense stinks. They lost because they have no pass rush. They lost because Devondre Campbell can't cover. They lost because they're slow as heck in the secondary. They lost because nobody besides Nick Bosa on their defensive front seems to be doing anything. Where's Leonard Floyd? Where's the speed on the back end? They lost because of their defense and their special teams. But it all, all roads lead back to Brock Purdy criticism. All right, let's hear from Matt Hasselback. Hasselback also weighed in on Purdy. And let's hear what uh, the former NFL quarterback who was – Pretty damn good at this position. You know, don't listen to Larry Kruger. Uh, listen to Richard Sherman. He's a future Hall of Fame corner. Oh, but he's a defensive guy. Okay, well, here's Matt Hasselback. Here's an offensive guy. Let's hear what Hasselback has to say about Brock Purdy. I want to I want to start with Brock Purdy. And I don't know if we touched on this last week. I said I'd always been a little bit of a, a critic. I'd said, oh, come on, it's a Mercedes. Just don't drive it into a tree. It's these guys. It's like not... It's like nine Hall of Famers. Let's contextualize this. But you know what? No Christian, no Debo, no Kittle. I, you can him are out of sorts. I sat there and watched it yesterday, and I'm like, he's a, I would sign him. I mean, it's just like I, I can't sit here and punish him forever because he went in the seventh round. People missed on him. What's your take on Purdy? Yeah, well, I love you, Colin, but I could not disagree with you more. Brock Purdy is an absolute baller. Like the guy does not get enough credit. I, I really don't enjoy the uh, the criticisms of him that his team so good around him because turn on the tape. This guy is an absolute machine. 
Um, I think he's lucky to have Kyle Shanahan. Yeah, no doubt about that. But Kyle Shanahan's fortunate to have him as well. This is a match made in heaven. I thought he was outstanding yesterday. You know, people will look at the three touchdowns. They should also look at the no interceptions. He protects the ball well. He delivers uh, on double moves. He uses his legs when he needs to use his legs. He's very good at what I call KYP, know your personnel. It's not about who's not out there. It's about who is out there. And Juwan Jennings has been playing good football for a couple of years now. And uh, he leaned on him because he needed to, but it was outstanding. And it wasn't like he was going to his first read. He was, you know, there was a design play to go to somebody else. It's not there. He's cool and calm and he gets to number two and to touch down so i think he's a really good player that doesn't get enough credit all right that's matt hasselbeck and you know i mean there's you know you heard coward and coward's got that the faulty premise and you know the old saying if your premise is wrong your conclusion by definition is going to be wrong his premise is that the niners are a rolls royce and brock purdy is you know let's not give brock too much credit for keeping the rolls royce in the middle of the road and i get that but the niners aren't a rolls royce the niners are not a rolls royce um, if anything, they're a, they're a nice car that's like, you know, seven, eight years old, that's got some problems and brake issues and all kinds of issues. Um, it's not a Rolls Royce in mint condition. But I think some of the things that, that Hasselback said there are need to be repeated. I mean, in his mind, Brock Purdy's an absolute baller. And he's like, turn on the tape. Turn on the tape. And he admits that Brock's lucky to have Kyle. But let's, at this point, Kyle's lucky to have Brock. I mean, you could make an argument if there was no Brock Purdy, Kyle Shanahan would be on the hottest of hot seats right now. He's got Brock Purdy and he's not. But if he didn't have Brock Purdy, he might be. Um, Brock takes care of the football. You know, he does. He protects the football. The other thing is he goes through his progressions. Um, and he's really good at going through his progressions. And he'll go through his progressions at a rapid pace. This guy sees the entire field. He doesn't see half the field. It's not half field reads. It's full field reads. And he'll go from one to two to three as fast as any quarterback out there. And if you really look at it, I think Alex Smith said it best when he was crystallizing the quarterback position in relationship to, you know, in a, in a comment that he made about Brock. He said, hey, look, you know, we can talk about all these things when it comes to quarterback. It, you know, it's, it, you know, they, they talk about height. Doesn't matter. Foot speed, doesn't matter. Hand size, doesn't matter. Wonderlick test, doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it really comes down to three, three factors. And it's how, how well do you process what you see at the line of scrimmage? So this is your computer. How, how good and how effective is your brain at processing all the different things that you see? That's, that's a major factor. That's one. Two, accuracy and timing. The ball's got to come out with accuracy and with timing. If you you could be the you could process everything, but if the ball comes out three seconds early and not accurate, and it's five yards above the receiver, it's an incompletion. So you got to be able to process what you see. You got to be you got the ball's got to come out on time with accuracy. Okay, that's kind of one really two different things, but really they're one and the same: timing and accuracy. Ball's got to come out on time. The ball's got to come out accurate. And then it comes down to just pure toughness. You got to be tough. Brock Purdy is having an MRI on his back. Why? Because he got roughed up this weekend. He had to run a bunch of times. He got knocked around. I don't know that he can play the way he played last weekend and last all the way to the playoffs. The Niners have to do a much better job. And I'm speaking almost directly about Colton McKivitz at this point. Colton's got to do a much better job at right tackle of pass protection. He's giving up way too many pressures. He's, he's giving up way too much pressure in Brock's face. That's the, fa that's the front side for Brock. So he's getting front side pressure on a regular basis because Colton is struggling here in the early going. He's got to get it going. Colton's got to improve. But what it really comes down to is Purdy. He's accurate, he's tough, and he's smart. He can process he can deliver it with, uh, with timing and accuracy, and he's tough. He will stand in there and take hits. He will stare down the rush, take a hit. He will run, take a hit. Um, and as Richard Sherman said, top five quarterback in the NFL. I'm, I'm right there. I mean, you know, I, I had him ranked sixth, but if you want to claim that he's top five, I, I'll go with you on it. Um, 
There's no question. It, the Niners are struggling. They're one and two. Their special teams is a mess. Their defense looks like it's without a strength at this point, which is amazing because it was not that long ago that their defense seemed like it was without a weakness. But the whole all roads lead to Purdy crap, it's done by people who just are in it for clicks and cash. Because that's all that, yeah, if you talk about Brock Purdy over the offensive line, you're going to get more clicks than if you talk about the offensive line. But that's it. If you're blaming Brock Purdy for the Niners' struggles, I don't, you know, I don't know what to say about you. I don't think you know what you're, know your ball all that well. Is he perfect? No. Um, no quarterback is. But let's not forget, this guy was the last pick in the draft. He has taken over as the starting quarterback on this team. And he has elevated this football team. And, and you're, some people are arguing that the Niners win um, and Brock's just along for the ride. Brock is leading them to victories when they win. Um, and and he, they lost this week. And, he, I, you know, if he was the reason, I would gladly say, you know what? Brock had a bad game. Brock wasn't, wasn't up to the task. The guy's playing incredible football. And right now, he doesn't have much of a defense, and he doesn't have much of a special teams to support him. But this all roads lead back to Purdy criticism. Dude, it's got to end. All right, there you go. Uh, tell me what you think in the comments below. Thanks to Mancini's for sponsoring this video. Thanks to Pig and a Pickle for sponsoring The Krug Show. Thanks to all of you guys for supporting The Krug Show as we approach 50,000 subs on YouTube.